The first of six months worth of MLB power rankings are out now in CBSSports.com. And our Matt Snyder has the Yankees as one of his biggest risers thanks to a perfect week. On the flip side, Matt dropped the Astros 11 spots from 3 to 14 after their winless week on the diamond. And no, oh, we didn't forget about you down at the bottom. Talk about the Mets at 26. That's still a beautiful graphic seeing all those baseball teams because it is baseball time. We've got our power rankings guru, Matt Snyder, joining us and our MLB insider, Jim Bowden. So again, Matt's going to give us his power rankings. Jim's going to reflect on that, agree or disagree. And Jim, any team news or injury updates, please feel free to share them in this segment. All right. Let's get to the Yankees. They go to Houston. They take all four against the Astros. What stood out to you, Matt, about the pinstripe so far? Uh, the resilience. I mean, those come from behind victories. And, and you know, even on Sunday, they, they, they lost that 3-1 lead. And then they still ended up prevailing in the late innings. Just a 4-0 start in Houston. Yeah, we could probably talk about how the Astros still can't win at home. And that's going to be a storyline until they rewrite the story. But look, the Yankees, it felt like last year's team would have been probably 2-2 two and two after these four games, if not 1-3. and three. Juan Soto makes a big difference. It's funny how maybe the DJ LeMayhew injury cleared the way because Oswaldo Cabrera was unbelievable. They're still going to have work to do because of the Garrett Cole injury. And they have so many question marks in the rotation behind Garrett Cole that it's going to be interesting to see how that how they piece that together. But 4-0 in Houston, I thought it was worthy of bumping them up toward the top. And I did want to say this. This is probably the hardest time to, to actually rank the teams because what we deal in series, obviously. We've only had one series. You could look at it like the Tigers winning three but they were all one run wins over the White Sox. So how are we supposed to judge them? Uh, the Astros lost four, but they lost four to the Yankees and they were all close games. So it's, it's really tough to do right now. Having said that, I'm still okay with Jim letting me have it. Yeah, look, I, I think the Yankees were very impressive. There's three things that really stood out to me from the Yankees over the weekend. One, their ability to work account and draw walks. Number two, the improvement in defense from a year ago. And number three, the youth factor. Let's let's start with the first one, a working account. So the acquisition of Juan Soto has given them an absolute superstar, right? He's nine for 17 with a home run. He threw Dubon out at the plate Thursday night for the victory to end the ball game there. Uh, but he's also walked three times. But his influence on the rest of the lineup is clear. This Yankee team walked 21 times in the four games against the Astros. 21 times. And you can tell everyone's kind of following suit. They're grinding at bats like Juan Soto did. Number two, the defense is better in left field. We saw Alex Verdugo's nice catch to end Sunday's game. We saw third baseman John Birdie filling in for LeMayu on Sunday, make a diving play to his right. And oh, by the way, when Cabrera was playing third, he did the same. And youth-wise, you know, to be able to watch Volpe develop, he worked really hard in the offseason, cleaning up his swing, using the whole field, out of the gate, he's four for 10. And as Matt mentioned, Cabrera, seven for 16. So 21 for 27 between the two of them. And that youth movement's going to help. And remember, they're 4-0, and oh, and Aaron Judge and Rizzo and Stanton haven't really hit yeah. yet. So very impressed with the Yankees. Uh, they belong to jump up on this list like Matt has done. Although I probably couldn't put them ahead of the Orioles for me, uh, but I certainly think they belong right up there. Yeah. Well, let's pick up where you left off, Jim, because the Orioles are at four. And Baltimore, fantastic season last year. Still questions about the rotation and the pitching staff. They addressed that with Corbin Burns, and one start does not make up for Ortiz and Hall, Matt. But so far, so good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was trying to think back to the last time they had a legitimate ace. It's got to be Mike Messina. I, I mean, I think some people might mention Chris Tillman was an all-star, but come on, he's not a legit ace. Corbin Burns, 11 strikeouts on opening day. That was amazing to see. It was especially fun because he gave up the home run to Mike Trout. They're down one nothing, And then the Orioles rattled off, I believe, 11 straight runs there. And Burns just completely locked in and went crazy. He was missing bats all over the place. The only reason I dropped them below the Yankees was... was Four wins in Houston for the Yankees is more impressive than winning two of three at home over the Angels. But I had the Orioles winning the AL East heading into the year. There was nothing that we saw over the weekend that would make me change my pick there. I still think the Orioles are going to win the, the AL East. It was just kind of like they had it right next to each other. But yeah, I mean, I, I can totally see saying the Orioles are going to be better. Um, I'm especially looking forward to with this team. Two things. First of all, Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rushman, MVP candidates this year, obviously. Um, and how they deal with 
this cache of position playing prospects or guys who are already on the roster, roster but really young, and maybe a void in the rotation, a little bit down the rotation. We'll see how it looks once Brash and Means are back in there behind Burns and Grayson Rodriguez, but they might need some starting pitching help. But remember, when Mike Elias was with the Astros, they traded for Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander. They just traded for Corbin Burns, even though he's one year away from free agency. I'm looking forward to seeing how they deal with this as we get into July. But for now, so far, so good. Yeah, so far so good. And uh, let, let's talk Grayson Rodriguez for a minute because his start was almost just as good as Corbin Burns. Six innings, one run. And remember in August and September, he pitched like an ace. So the one thing with the Orioles to me that kind of separates them from the Yankees is Burns and Rodriguez are two number one type starters. Now the key is going to be can Kyle Bradish come back from his elbow injury? Because remember last year he was their best starter. But if he can come back, Burns, Rodriguez, and Bradish are going to be tough to beat. The other thing I find fascinating about the Orioles, and another reason why I love them so much, is they have two players in the minor leagues that should be starting in the big leagues right now. Second baseman Jackson Holiday and third baseman Kobe Mayo. And so if there's an injury that the Orioles have, they have a star player. They just have to call up from the minor leagues. And the other thing that's fascinating about this team is Colton Kowser is better than Austin Hayes in left field, and yet he's the fourth outfielder right now. They're letting the veterans start in left, and I think Kowser's only had two at-bats, but he had an unbelievable spring. So the Orioles' depth is so good that any injury they have to a position player, they are absolutely prepared to replace him with, in my opinion, actually a better player. So if Bradish comes back or they have an injury, I think the Orioles are set, and I believe, Matt, you had them actually going to the World Series, and I yeah. certainly think after the first few games of the, of, the, of the season so far, to me, they look like they have the best path to get there. I know they gave up 100%. Joey Ortiz, but boy, when you have Gunnar Henderson, Jackson Holiday, it wouldn't go anywhere, so might as well go to the Milwaukee uh, organization to try to get something there uh, in that Burns trade. Speaking of getting to the World Series, Arizona got there last year. They're the current NL pennant holders, Matt, and yet the D-backs biggest riser seven spots this week. Yeah, I mean, it's, look, Rockies at home, you know, that's not the toughest test in the world, but you still have to take care of business. And they did so in pretty emphatic fashion, winning three or four, winning three or four rather easily. It was interesting to see one of their, their Achilles last year was the lack of home run power. They went out and added Jock Peterson and A. Eugenio Suarez to the lineup in the offseason. They've both hit the ball well so far. Christian Walker looks great. Lourdes Gurriel, I mean, come on, looks, looks awesome so far. So it looks like their offense is going to be a little bit more well-rounded this season. If they're still going to run. Run. They're still going to work counts. Uh, pitching wise, they're not as good as they're going to be because Eduardo Rodriguez is hurt right now. Jordan Montgomery is still building himself up after being signed late. But Brandon Fott looked pretty good yesterday. We already know about Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly to top that rotation. They're going to be five deep in the rotation before we know it. Very impressive first weekend. Uh, again, it's the Rockies on the road, so not that big of a deal there. But hey, good teams take care of business, and that's what they did. Yeah, I'm just going to re verbally repost everything that he just said because I agree with all of it. You know, last year they were 22nd in baseball in home runs. Uh, to start the year, they're seventh. And Suarez is six for 14 with a home run. At some point, Peterson's going to add to that. Gurriel's already hit three. Walker's already hit two. And this is a team that's going to steal bags. Remember, they were second uh, in, in baseball last year with 166 behind the red so it is a much well balanced offense as Matt said and look at Montgomery and Rodriguez are going to be difference makers for this team I mean they are five deep in the rotation and they're, look they're, they're going to give the Dodgers a run for the money the Dodgers yeah they're going to win 100 games but Arizona is going to be on their heels the entire season and once again they're going to make the playoffs as a wild card team along with the Philadelphia Phillies this is a better team than the team that won the National League Championship a year ago by a lot and not just a little. Mm. All right, let's mm. get to the Pirates, Matt, uh, Matt, which is part of your way too early fool's gold candidate type of team. Yeah, I mean, part of that was their competition. Again, 
4-0 on the road. That's incredibly impressive. I just think the Marlins are probably really bad, so I want to see the Pirates against better teams. But there's a lot of good things there. I mean, O'Neill Cruz, we barely even got to see him at all last year. It basically was a lost season with that broken leg so early in the season. He looks awesome, as expected. You know, Henry Davis is going to be a difference maker for this lineup. We know about Brian Reynolds. Keaton Brian Hayes, age 27, he might be blossoming into a superstar here. And it's not like every single thing went right for them. Mitch Keller didn't even throw the ball well. So it's a very, very impressive weekend for the Pirates. Some come from behind victories in there. Two extra innings wins against the Marlins. I just thought the Marlins were going to take a big step backward anyway. And the rotation is completely ravaged with injuries right now. So it's more like, yeah, the, the, great. 4-0 is amazing on the road. I just think it was against very weak competition. So let's see how they do as they move forward and they start to play some better teams. But again, great, great start for them. Getting tight on time, but uh, Jim, Matt has the Mets down eight spots after that 0-3 start. You agree? Yeah, he's got to keep moving them uh, down as the season goes on. This is not a good baseball team. I call them the mediocre Mets. Four of their five starters are over the age of 30 years old. Their best starter is on the injured list with a rotator cuff capsule issue. That's Kode Senga. So they just don't have the starting pitching to compete. And really, they embarrassed themselves in the weekend against Milwaukee. Reese Hoskins with a legal slide into second base. And for some reason, Jeff McNeil took exception to it for absolutely no reason. Then Johan Ramirez threw behind him. And look, the rest of baseball just looked at the Mets and go, what are you doing? Uh, but this is a team that's going to disappoint. I, I was surprised to hear the owner, Steve Cohen, uh, saying this past weekend that he thought that this uh, was going to be a playoff team and he'd be disappointed if they don't get there. Well, I can tell you, Steve, right now, you might as well get disappointed because you're not getting there. Jim, thank you. Matt, certainly appreciate it. Check out Matt Snyder's complete power rankings on CBSSports.com. Gentlemen, thank you as we take a look at the notable MLB games tonight. Again, it's a day where a lot of starting pitchers making their season debuts, fourth and fifth in the rotation. Red Sox off the board here at Oakland. Won't have to deal with a lot of fans. Sunday's game for the <laughs> Oakland A's against the Guardians drew a whopping 4,118 fans as they continue to boycott ownership.